As human beings, we all have needs. And there are goals that we all want to attain when it comes to our goals regarding the Akhirah as well as our worldly goals. In Surah Al-Fatiha, Allah Jalla wa Ala reminds us of two very important principles that we need to stick to when it comes to attaining anything in life. Allah Jalla wa Ala teaches us in Surah Al-Fatiha to say, Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim. Guide us to the straight path. Notice how, firstly, this is a dua. You are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something that you need. And because we all need guidance, we are required to repeat this dua several times a day. So look at how Allah Jalla wa Ala is teaching you. That this guidance is something you need as a human being. Ask Allah for guidance. And don't become despondent when it comes to asking Allah. Repeat your dua. Carry on asking Him for that goodness. And similarly, not only when it comes to guidance, when it comes to anything that you want to attain in life. Remember point number one. Whatever you want, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in charge. He owns it. He's able to give you that which you are searching for, that which you are after. So ask Him for this help. Ask Him for this guidance. Ask Him even when it comes to attaining any worldly benefit. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches us in a hadith he mentions that a person should make dua to Allah for everything even if it may be something as small as wanting to fix his own shoe or shoelace imagine something insignificant and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us don't be shy when it comes to asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that Musa alayhi salam when he was in need he helped the people, he had fled for his life, he was in a foreign land, he had no shelter, no food, no drink. What does he do? He asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqir. My Lord, whatever you send to me, whatever goodness you send my way, I'm in need of it. Imagine, a Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, this ayah in Surah Al-Fatiha that we repeat every single day reminds us firstly to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our religious guidance. We are all in need of it. And a person may say that what if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already guided somebody to the straight path? Why do they carry on making this dua? And the answer is, part of this dua is asking Allah to guide you to the straight path and to keep you steadfast on the straight path. To keep you steadfast on the straight path. So look at how the dua is not shallow. The dua has or the dua contains a long-term plan. You're asking for that guidance and you're asking for steadfastness. And similarly, when you ask for something good of the dunya, Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put barakah in it, to bless it, to grant you the goodness of it and save you from the evil of it. How many times you find somebody wants something of the dunya, they ask for this worldly thing and when they attain it, it brings about their misery or it brings about calamity or it brings about new trials and tribulations that they didn't have in the first place. So when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something, ask Him for the goodness of that thing also and ask to be saved from the evil of it. So that's the first point, my beloved brothers and sisters in Islam. Whatever you want to attain in life, religious guidance, worldly guidance, worldly possession, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are taught to repeat the dua, Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. Thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us something very, very important that we've all got to keep in mind. He teaches us to say, Sirat al an'amta alayhim. We've already asked for guidance to the straight path. We are asking, O oh Allah, we're asking you to guide us to the path of those whom you have favored. And from this one verse, there's so many benefits we can take. Firstly, 
when it comes to looking for people or looking at role models we've got to look at those who are good exemplary people that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches you in this verse you're asking Allah to guide you to their path but he's also reminding you that they are good people and in the verse after they are evil people so stick to those who are good and stay away from evil in another verse he informs us who are these people who Allah has bestowed his favor upon he says وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ they are the Anbiya, the Prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who are truthful, the martyrs, and the pious people. وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقَ And those are the best companions, the best company. So look at how this verse is teaching us to ask Allah for guidance to their path. And it's also a reminder for us to seek out their companionship. You want to attain some religious goodness, or you want to attain even goodness that will benefit you in your worldly life you asked Allah for it then look at the people who've already treaded that path and make sure they have good traits and good qualities especially when it comes to religious guidance and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you at the end of Surah Al-Fatiha to avoid those people those role models who are bad and evil and who have gone astray my beloved brothers and sisters in Islam do not underestimate do not underestimate what your companionship does to you, your circle of friends do to you, the people who you associate with. There's how many verses in the Quran wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that there will be people in Jannah and they'll be discussing certain things with who? With other companions they had, with good company they had. And at times you may not meet that good company in this world. But as we mentioned from the Anbiya, from the Siddiqeen, those who are truthful, etc. As long as you aim and strive towards being like them and being with them, you will be resurrected with the good and pious on the Day of Judgment. And similarly, Allah reminds us that there will be people in Jahannam and they will be blaming one another for being there. What does that show you? They took bad role models and they had bad friendship. They had those people who were bad and evil. And in the world we live in today, we've got to realize a form of friendship and companionship occurs online. A form of friendship and companionship occurs online. So you find the people who you follow, you've, people, whether you like it directly or indirectly, they have an impact on you. So make sure they are good people so they can, bi'ithnillah, lead you towards goodness. And if they are evil or they are people who are calling towards that which displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you may find yourself leaning towards them slowly. That's a form of companionship, a form of role models where people look up to others who they've never met in life. They've never, at times they may have not even lived at the same time or in the same country. But because of technology, you're able to access their content. You're able to access what they say and it has an impact on you. So also when it comes to your companionship online and when it comes to you alone with your thoughts, with your thoughts, it's a form of companionship. It's a form of feeding your inner beliefs and your inner values. So make sure you think of that which is good and make sure you strive towards goodness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in many verses, He says, وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطْوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ Don't follow the footsteps of shaitan. Part of the footsteps when it comes to uh, the footsteps of shaitan is he whispers to you. Allah tells us in Surah An-Nas, "Min sharril waswasil khannas." Save us from the evil of the one who whispers in the chests of the people. So when you are alone, your thoughts, what you think about, make sure it's that which pleases Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Look at when it comes to acts of worship performed in the heart or whilst you are alone. Allah tells you to have good thoughts. Allah tells you not to think bad of others, etc. Why? Because if you do, you are feeding an evil or bad habit and you are developing 
that which is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that which causes you harm. And when you're somebody who even with your thoughts, when you're alone, you think of that which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you think and plan about doing things that please Allah, achieving those things in this world as well as in the next, that are pleasing to him, you find you are a better person, you are at peace because you're not trying to disobey or plot in a way that you defy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, these two points we took from Surah Al-Fatiha. Allah Jalla wa Ala taught us about dua, he reminded us to ask him for guidance and similarly if you need anything in life, even if it may seem trivial or small to you, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. And point number two, seek out good company and good role models. So much so some of the scholars mention that good company, people who are good and pious, they have a special shafa'ah and intercession on the day of judgment. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happy with them and he permits for them, they will intercede on behalf of their, of their friends. That's why in the Quran, Allah Jalla wa Ala makes mention of those who will be punished and those who will be thrown into the fire. And one of the things they will regret, they, or they will not have, he says, Wala Sadiqin Hamim. They won't even have a close friend to intercede on their behalf. They won't have a close friend to intercede on their behalf. So similarly, in the same way, bad company leads us astray. Good company, bi'ithnillah, helps you in this world. And on the day of judgment, bi'ithnillah, this good company also helps you. Some of the scholars mention that this good company, they have an intercession that bi'ithnillah, if Allah permits and He's happy with them, they will intercede on behalf of one another. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the correct understanding. May He make us from those who always make dua, ask Allah for guidance, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that which we need in the akhirah as well as in the grave as well as our worldly needs and may he guide us to good company and good friends and may he save us from the evil of the people and those who are bad ameen wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in